Born in Kenya, brought up in South Africa, he has been in politics for over 50 years, ranging from uh, the governments of uh, Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, as well as being the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland and much, much more. The United Kingdom's high-profile politician and author, Lord Peter Hayne, is in the country to give a public lecture today. It's entitled, Islamic State and Terror, War Without End, which happens today at the Wits University Graduate School of Business. He's also a visiting professor from the Wits Business School. An absolute pleasure to welcome um, Lord Peter Hayne into studio. Very welcome, warm welcome to you. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Liam. It's an absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for coming in. Uh, we've touched a little bit on your historical achievements, and when I mean a little, I think I've just, I've just had one spoon of froth <laughs> off the cappuccino because it just keeps on going down and down. What a, what a wonderful history you do have. Um, what, are you, what are you doing at the moment? Are you still involved in lecturing and being a professor? Yes, I'm visiting Wits. Uh, visiting professor at Wits Business School, yeah. so I'm teaching there, really enjoying it, on some of my experiences of leadership and negotiating conflict resolution and so on. But of course, my roots are in South Africa. I lived as a child, as you said, in Pretoria. My parents were involved in the anti-apartheid struggle, yeah. and one of my earliest memories was being woken up in the middle of the night as a 10-year-old to find that they'd been put in prison. And then they were both issued with banning orders, and we had to go into exile in Britain in 1966. So my roots are here, yeah. but my history has been in Britain, and that's where I've spent most of my political life. Amazing. I mean, you must have been exceptionally interested and enthralled by the conversation that we just had with the advocate as well, talking about the deaths of so many of these great leaders that the question marks have always hung over them, whether or not the reporting of history is true or not. Lots of unanswered questions yeah. about that awful horrible evil time of apartheid and in fact I was intrigued by the uh, demand to reopen the case of Chief Albert Latuli because I remember meeting him as a boy my parents uh, took me to meet him as a boy when they were activists in Pretoria and he was visiting and a very impressive man but there was always I remember my parents saying there's something odd about this yeah. that he stepped in front of a train okay his sight was uh, a problem for him but these things don't really happen by accident, no. I don't think. They didn't under apartheid. Yeah, incredible. It is incredible. And it'll be interesting to see if that inquest comes about. And, uh, and I'm sure you'll be watching it as well with, with, with great uh, interest. Now, the, the reason that you're here, what's bringing you here, is quite an interesting topic as well, and one that has the world worried as well. And uh, it's presumably the focus on ISIS and other nature, nations such as the US and the UK as well as Russia. Talk to us a little bit about the crux of what you'll be talking about. Trying to explain what is happening in the Middle East. It's incredibly complicated at the present time with the uh, war in Syria, the war in Iraq, all sorts of different sides, Russia involved, the United States involved, sometimes backing different groups, sometimes backing the same objective of, of tackling and driving ISIS, Islamic State, Daesh, out of the region. And awful carnage, five million refugees, cities like Mosul, historic cities, cities like uh, Raqqa and, uh, and Ramadi, d d dist uh, destroyed to rubble. And what I think needs to be done is that Washington and London should take a more even-handed approach. Mm. The real problem here, and the root of it, is that Iran and Saudi Arabia are on opposite sides of the struggle. Iran is the Shia um, country, Shia Muslim country, the Saudis as Sunni Muslims. Uh, then you've got the Emirates lining up with the Saudis. You've got Bahrain with the Saudis. You've got um, Qatar now at loggerheads with the Saudis. Uh, and more closely aligned to Iran than any of the other Sunni uh, states in the region. And of course then you've got Turkey playing a role. And I believe what needs to happen is those states on the ground, and that's what I'm arguing tonight in the lecture, need to take ownership of this conflict. Yeah. Otherwise you're not going to resolve it. Yeah. It yeah. cannot be resolved by a bombing from uh, uh, um, Russia or bombing from America, though that has been necessary to stop the advance of ISIS, where they've just been terrorizing people, killing wantonly, acts of unspeakable brutality that you can't just imagine people, human beings doing, like forcing uh, people to eat the corpses of their relatives before they're executed themselves. Just horrible, barbaric stuff. So, you know, the bombing had to stop them, but in the end, the countries involved 
must stop fighting each other. They're proxies in the region. They've got different militia involved in Syria and Iraq. And I think this will be a war without end yeah. unless they take ownership of the problem and unless there's encouragement by other countries, perhaps including South Africa, to, to, to prompt the nations in the region to do precisely that. Goodness me, absolutely interesting, because I was going to ask you uh, South Africa's involvement in all of this, but this is your lecture, that's going to be the basis of all of it, so if anyone wants to get down there, they must go. Um, visit www.wbs.ac.za you can find the information there. I want to, while I have you in studio though, because that is a lecture you're giving and people will hear yes. it. My, my interest however is quite, um, it's more South Africa specific and particularly your views. I was reading uh, an interview that you did give recently about how South Africa and where South Africa is going. The dream of that rainbow nation is fading fast and, and I'm, I'm sort of quoting what you had to say. What are we doing wrong? W what is happening in this country that you also, from an outside perspective, even though you have your roots here, are seeing this, this rainbow fading fast? Well, many people like me involved in the anti-apartheid struggle and I was particularly prominent in leading campaigns to stop all white Springbok tours in the uh, in the 1970s where we took direct action running on the pitch at Twickenham and so on stopping the cricket matches at Lords like the test <laughs> that's just been yeah. happening at the Oval because they were all white teams so it pains me a great deal to see the fact that from the top from the very top of the country's government at the present time I believe Nelson Mandela's legacy is being trashed and those of us involved in the anti-apartheid struggle, including many within South Africa, I had no choice, I was forced to go into exile, but many in South Africa are speaking up, and I support them, because there has to be change. If South Africa is to get back on course, to be a growing economy, to deal with all the problems of inequality and transformation and, and tackling poverty and all of those things, You've got to run the economy properly. You can't be looting the parastatals. You can't be um, basically ignoring the economic needs to keep your own elite and your friends in power. That's what I think is so wrong at the present time. Mm. And I sound animated about it because I am. I feel that this country has got so much potential. Indeed it does. And it's not being realized because those at the top are looking after themselves and their mates, their friends, not looking after the country. I'm going to ask you to, if you don't mind, just stay for a little bit. We just need to do the news. I'm going to wrap up our conversation because there's just so many interesting things that we can hear from you. In studio with us is uh, Lord Peter, and he's visiting here uh, to give a lecture, but he's also got some unbelievable opinions on the current situation in South Africa, and I'd love to just uh, pick his brain a little bit further. Before we get into the news, though, which is 30 seconds, remember yesterday we had a breakfast with a renowned international psychic and medium, John Edward. Uh, he's in the country for a show at uh, Monte Cassino on the 5th of August. Um, he gave us two double tickets to give away for the event, and the question that we asked yesterday for viewers to answer was what was the star sign of John Edward uh, well the answer is Libra it's amazing how many people said Leo or Scorpio when we didn't stop emphasizing the Libra thing but nonetheless we've got